Hello everybody and welcome to Storm Reads and today my video is going to be about uh, my middle grade runner-up books. So I've, I've lumped all my middle grade together for just this and everything instead of like doing just like my horror ones or um, mystery ones or whatever it is. I did read 124 middle grade books which I think is probably the most I've ever read in a year. It definitely was like the year of the middle grade and I've really enjoyed reading the middle grade and everything. But I have read at least, if I counted right, 22 uh, mystery middle grade and uh, 44 horror middle grade. And any in between, I have I read like some fantasies, a few contemporary, just not very many. And then, like, some are, like, just, I categorized them as just fiction because I didn't know where to put them or, um, kind of action-adventure things. So there are a bunch of different groups, but my main groups are the mystery and the horror and everything. And I came up with quite a few that I could, uh, do for runner-up. Um, I went through and picked out what I thought were my favorite middle grade so that I can do a separate... Um, one for that. So I'll have like my adult books and then my middle grade books for my favorites. And um, yeah, there's there's quite a few that I considered, you know, whenever I think about them in the grand scheme of things, like I don't give middle grade books five stars very often, but there are a few books that I have rated five stars. Most of the time they always lean around anyway, like 4.5 to 4, somewhere around there, but they're still to me really good books. And so I went through like everything and I was like, okay, so is that a favorite? Do I think of it more on a favorite side or do I think it's like a runner up to a favorite or whatever? I went through and so I came out with quite a few books for runner up and quite a few for favorites. So I have 11 total on my list, but there are a couple that I could add the second book on to it as well because I read more than one book in that series. And everything but I will mostly just probably talk about like one book as a whole and everything and so um, the first book I have is Amari and the Great Game by B.B. Austin. So with Amari uh, and the Great Games by B.B. Austin it's the second book in the um, Supernatural, Supernatural Investigations trilogy and um, I'm like highly anticipating the third one, if it ever comes out, because <laughs> it keeps getting pushed back, so you never know. But anyway, um, I thought this one was was good. It just wasn't as great as the first book, in my opinion. Um, and maybe it's because you know it's the second book syndrome and like this kind of series where, you know, in the first book everything's all new and then. Um, so things were just like really cool and I really really enjoyed what was going on with the first book where Amari uh, finds out all about the supernatural stuff and everything and in her quest to try to find what happened to her brother and where he is and all that kind of stuff. And in this one, uh, it just, I don't know, it just didn't have quite that punch. And I thought it was good, but at times I thought it was kind of a little bit slow and, and kind of boring and was wondering if anything was going to happen. And the great games didn't really, I don't know, weren't quite as like wowing, I guess, as I thought it would be. Um, I don't know, I thought I was going to get something different out of the great games. So I thought it was good and it definitely you know, has me curious about, like, what's going to happen going forward and everything with, um, Amari and, uh, her kind of, like, little nemesis that she has in this and everything. And I like some of the other characters in the series as well. Her friend, who I cannot remember her name. I know it starts with, like, an I. I don't know if it's Inez or... Anyway, something, her character and like what happens with her in the second book was probably the best part out of the whole thing and everything. So I did like this one, just it didn't make like favorites because it just wasn't quite there like the first book in the series was. And so that's why it gets a runner up spot. The next one I have is the Hide and Geek series by T.P. Jagger. There are two books in this series, and the first book is 
Hide and Geek, and then the second book is The Treasure Test. And they both uh, have kind of the same kind of a premise as the fact that it is them doing kind of like a scavenger hunt of sorts to try to find something and everything. And so um, it's about these friends that they are called Geek. And it's because they're, they call themselves Geek because, well, they are kind of that kind of, of kids. They're, you know, the smart ones. But uh, it stands for Ginger, Edgar, Elena, and Kevin. <laughs> So, they just took the first letter of their names. Uh, their arch nemesis kind of gave them that. They're like, oh, look, you guys are the geeks or whatever. And, you know, they just embrace their geekiness and everything. And um, there's a in the first one, there's a famous toy maker who uh, has this, like, was a puzzle person. And there's supposed to be, like, this treasure that they could find. And it would be good for their town if they could find this and everything and so they go on like this scavenger hunt and try to find things and the same kind of thing happens in the second book in the treasure test where um, some people don't believe that they're as good as they say they are at finding things and um, it's putting like a shadow on everything that happened from the first book and so somebody is giving them a scavenger hunt test to see if they could actually do what they say that they did. The only thing with the treasure test, I mean, I liked it just about as much as the um, first one, but um, at the same time, I did think that the kids went a little overboard sometimes on trying to find things and um, were a little naughty what they were doing and I don't want to say anything to spoil anything but I mean just I was like yeah, maybe you shouldn't go there and everything but overall I really enjoyed this uh, the two books from this series so far it's the only two books out I'm hoping there's going to be another one because I do I like the treasure hunt aspects and I do like the four kids there they're a lot of fun and the next one I have is Karma Moon Ghost Hunter by Melissa Savage. And um, this was my first book. Well, no, I take that back. I thought this was my first book by this author. But for some reason, I kept thinking that name sounded kind of familiar. And then whenever I was looking up more books for, by her because I really kind of enjoyed this one, I found out that I had read one from her before. <laughs> but it had been a really long time. And everything but this one is a kind of a paranormal type and it's definitely got the ghosties and it's about uh, Karma Moon who battles anxiety and everything and her f father um, is really into uh, the paranormal and uh, he has a ghost hunting documentary and so they're going to this house and they are going to be looking to see if there are signs of the uh, paranormal in this house and everything. And her and a friend kind of get wrapped up in everything that is happening in this supposedly haunted house. There is actually something else that's going on in this house. And uh, she kind of gets wrapped up in the mystery of everything and trying to figure stuff out. And it is... Um, Oh yeah, I forgot. It is the haunted house that they're at. It is the um, the Stanley Hotel. So we all know, if, well not everybody I guess, but most people know that that comes from The Shining. <laughs> and that it, it actually is a real hotel. And so yeah. So it was a lot of fun. You know, definitely not like a favorite, but it was still a lot of fun. And I think if you like paranormal mysteries and things like that. I don't really necessarily think it was real spooky, so I think this would definitely be a good one for those who don't like uh, real spooky things, but they like to read spooky and everything. So I thought this one was just fun. The next one I have is um, Dead City by James Ponty, and this one is the first in the Dead City trilogy. And I meant to read another one in this book this uh, year, but I didn't get to it, so next year priorities. 
because I mean it is just a trilogy so I would like to knock the trilogy off um, and I probably wouldn't have picked this one up if it wasn't for a uh, cat from cat novels adventure who did um, her zombie readathon zombie a thon and everything because I don't really read a lot of zombie books and I didn't even whoops sorry about the glare didn't even realize I had a zombie book <laughs> until I realized that, oh, I have this book and everything. But this is about um, Molly, who is a uh, tween, and she's pretty smart, but her mother let her go. Her mother was, like, um, worked, um, is it a coroner, autopsy medical examiner? One of those things. And it's, it's been a while, because I read this at the beginning of the year. Um... And everything, but her mother had passed on. But her mother let her go to work with her, like spend time there. So she's like very um, okay with being around that kind of thing. And um, she ends up finding out that there are zombies walking around. And there's a group of young people that are protecting the city from zombies. There's like certain levels of zombies. And there are like some that are okay. But then there are others that, you know, they have to do the zombie hunting thing for and everything and so yeah with the way this one left off I'm really curious to see what's gonna happen that's why I meant to get to the other one um, she kinda got herself in a little bit of trouble at the end so I'm kinda curious to see how she can get herself out of these troubles or how that's gonna push the uh, trilogy forward or whatever and so yeah so if you like zombie books you should give this a try I really like James Ponty I read his Toast trilogy and really enjoyed it so I knew I would like this one even though it's zombies. <laughs> and so the next one I have is Fable Haven by Brandon Mole, which is the first book in the Fable Haven series. And um, this one, I will say that at the beginning, it kind of dragged a little bit and it was a little bit slow. But once uh, some things happened with the kids and um, and like Fable Haven as a whole, and how they have to uh, go and rescue <laughs> some people. I, I'm trying not to spoil anything or say anything, but um, it's they find out that their grandparents um, are like the caretakers for Fable Haven, and they've always wondered why they've never like you know uh, known any of this kind of thing. You know, it's like a very hush hush type thing, and um, yeah, so. It's It's got some interesting things going on for it. Once you get past, like, the kind of boring beginning and everything. And I'm curious to see what's going to happen. And I have the second book on my shelves. And so I really do need to get to the second one. I only have the first two on my shelves of this series. But, yeah, I'm curious. Just trying not to spoil anything because I don't want to spoil it for anybody. But if you like fantasy... Um, kind of middle grade. The brother was a bit of a pain, and I thought he got kind of some of the things he deserved. <laughs> he, he was he was really annoying. He's very annoying. But um, I've been told that he gets better as the series goes on. But <laughs> he was very very annoying. I have what stayed what stays buried by Suzanne Young, and this is about twelve year old Callista who has the ability to speak with the dead. Um, and up until her 13th birthday, and whenever her 13th birthday happens, she will lose her ability to see the dead. And that's really hard for her because, first off, her father's dead, and she gets to see her father all the time and everything. And, you know, she helps dead people, and, you know, it's just something that she's been used to doing. And then to know that... There is like, it's because there's like a curse or whatever on their family. Like, they used to not lose their ability, I believe, if I remember right. But then something happened, and now, um, whenever they turn 13, they lose their ability. And she meets this uh, mean lady called the Tall Lady. She's a very angry spirit with a grudge. And she is taking some of the young kids and everything and so she's also afraid that if she doesn't figure out all this stuff before she turns 13 which is about to happen in a few weeks that you know some bad and serious things are going to happen so 
It's a rush to figure out what's going on and the fact that this lady is also after her younger sister who seems to have gotten her abilities already even though in, and if so she's trying to help her sister and um, try to keep her away from this mean tall lady and some other kids in town as well. She has to team up with a boy I don't remember the boy's name but his uh, brother I think is missing or something like that and so they team up together to try to figure out what's going on. It's um, got a little spooky in it, but I don't think it's too big on like the horror factors. But if you like paranormal, fantasy, ghost things, you'd probably enjoy it. Um, it does uh, deal with um, grief and things like that and the loss of a loved one. And like she's going to have to figure out how to deal with the fact that, you know, when she turns 13, she's not going to see her father anymore. And so. I think that's like, you know, you grieve when he dies and then you can see him as a ghost and then you have to grieve all over again. So it kind of deals with that kind of stuff. And yeah, I liked it. And another ghost story that I have is The Poltergeist Problem by Betsy Erig. This one was just fun. <laughs> it's about three best friends who discover a haunted orphanage and get swept up into a ghoulish shenanigans and everything. And yeah, that's pretty much what happens. They follow this kid and that they see in the woods and they follow him to this orphanage and then they find out that there are ghost kids at this orphanage and they need help and that was why they were trying to bring them uh, to the orphanage because they were hoping that they'd be able to help they thought they were getting some vandals because that's what they needed because they were wanting somebody to burn down the orphanage or whatever but then you know when they talk things out they're figuring that maybe that's not the best route to go and so the kids are going to try to help them figure out why is the, the the house upset. Because the house is haunted. And not just by them. <laughs> There's like a poltergeist. So these kids have a poltergeist problem because they have these ghosts. And then there's a poltergeist. And so there you have it. And everything. And so it, it was just like a lot of fun. Um, definitely uh, more on the light-hearted... Uh, supernatural ghosty kind of thing and then the next one I have is the exit 13 series by James Prigler the first book is called the whispering pines and the second book is called I think the spaces in between I need to check here yeah the spaces in between and so I read both of those and I enjoyed both of them a lot um, it was really weird that the first one is called The Whispering Pines because my favorite middle grade series, the series is called The Whispering Pines. But this series is called Exit 13, but the first book is called The Whispering Pines. It got kind of confusing because I did read a book in The Whispering Pines series, and so <laughs> it was a little confusing. But this one... It's really kind of hard to talk about without spoilers, but it's about this family and um, they are going on vacation and while they're driving, there's this huge fog and they can't really see and so they decide to pull over and the two kids, whose names are, I can't remember, um, let's see, oh, Willow and Ash, okay, and they have their dog, Daisy, and so they let the dog go and do its thing and everything. But the dog seems to be acting really weird and kind of strange. And it's all of a sudden, like, the fog kind of goes away and they see this exit. And it says, you know, there's a hotel here on exit 13. And they're like, you know, well, why don't we just go ahead and stay at this hotel? So they go and pets are welcome and all that stuff. The strange thing, when they get there... Like, the guy already knows they're coming. He even knows they have a dog. <laughs> so, I mean, that's like, you know, clue number one. That something's not right here. But, you know, <laughs> kind of put it to the side and be like, okay, whatever. And they stay there and some spooky things ensue. And that's pretty much all it can say because, yeah, I don't want to spoil anything. And I definitely can't really say anything about the second book because, yeah, definitely would spoil things. But it does continue on right off from what happens at the very end of the first one. 
And uh, this one, though, also has in it some black and white comic strips and stuff every now and then. Um, it was either at the beginning of a... Either at the beginning or the end of a chapter. I can't remember exactly. I will say that this one is very good on audio. So I would suggest immersive reading and getting the audiobook and the book so that you can see the black and white comic stuff but you get the uh, good narration. It has some very spooky kind of um, special effects and, and things like that that just really made it a very good read. And so yeah, I suggest immersive reading. The next one I have is the one contemporary book that I have on my list here, and that is Macy McMillan and the Rainbow Goddess by Sherry Green. So this one is about Macy, and um, she's deaf, and she is also dealing with the fact that her mother is moving them out of her home and into their new stepfather's home, and with the stepfather comes two pesky six-year-old twin step uh, sisters and she's just not happy at all. She uh, kind of acts out a little bit and gets herself into some trouble and her uh, mother, instead of being like sympathetic about things and everything, sends her over to their neighbor's house who is an uh, 86-year-old uh, lady, Iris, who is also getting ready to move, but her situation is different. She is getting ready to move into an assisted living place because she just cannot take care of herself like she used to. And so, you know, she's having a few problems of her own. And the only thing is, is Iris doesn't know sign language, so how is Macy supposed to understand anything, you know, that the old lady is saying? And, you know, how are they going to communicate with each other? But they do find a way and everything. And she does start to bond with this older lady and, you know, kind of learns a few things about life and all that through it, every, everything. And um, one thing I don't like about contemporary middle grade books is they always make me want to cry. <laughs> and if anybody knows anything, I do not like a book that makes me want to cry. But... I really did like this book. It was really good. It was sweet. Um, the I thought the ending was really sweet and everything too. And so yeah, it's just definitely kind of a heartfelt book. So this one says it's in verse, I think. It says writes free verse. I listened to it on audio, so I didn't really get the whole verse thing. But um, yeah, so I don't know. Some people like that, some people don't. So I thought I would mention that because it does say poetry. But yeah. So this is realistic fiction, and I'm not huge on it, but that's why I said every now and then a contemporary does come around that I enjoy. I'm very picky on the contemporary books that I do try, but when I do try them, for the most part I like them. Sometimes I don't, but for the most part I do. So I just don't like crying. <laughs> and the next book I have is The Great Pet Heist. And it's actually the Great Pet Heist series. I did read books one and two. The second one was the Great Ghost Hoax. And this is about a group of adorable animals. Because look at that cover. <laughs> and this is by Emily Ecton. And in the first book, uh, Butterbing and the Gang, they uh, find out, you know, that they're the person that they call Mrs. Food, the one that takes care of them, and everything. She slips and falls and she's not going to be able to take care of them and they overhear some things and think that they're about to be like evicted and <laughs> taken somewhere and so they've got to find some money. So they are going around and trying to find things that they think they can sell or whatever to try to make some money and, and everything and you find out you know some other things along the way. It's just, It was just really fun it's a, a humorous animal book, and the second one, um, I think it's ca they call her Mrs. Third Floor, and she thinks she has a ghost in her house, and um, they're trying to figure that out and trying to help out what's going on there because they she, they figure find out that she's being scammed or whatever, and <laughs> by some ghost hunting people, and 
it was kind of funny f finding out who the like ghost actually was and everything. And so yeah, these are just kind of fun humorous books. There are three of them I believe currently, and so I need to get to that last one, maybe next year. Then the last book I have is called uh, Bite Risk by S. J. Wills. It is the first book in the Bite Risk series. And this one is for my werewolf fans that like middle grade. <laughs> I, I didn't think it was like too spooky or anything, but it does involve a kind of unique take on werewolves and everything. And this is about 13 year old Cell who lives on a remote isolated, lives in a remote isolated town. And um, the thing is the adults turn into werewolves and the kids have to make sure they're secured and put up and have to deal with that going on. So it's kind of weird locking your mother up to make sure she doesn't get out and harm anybody. But some things start happening with that and like his mother gets loose and some bad things happen and they call their werewolves rippers. But because of some of the stuff that's been happening, they start to question what's going on in their town and uh maybe there's something a little bit off about what's going on in their town and somebody might be controlling it or something and everything and so yeah i enjoyed it i thought it was a lot of fun it was a different kind of take on werewolves and i liked cell and the other uh kids that were involved in this though i can't remember their names but i am interested to see what's going to happen and so that's the last one. I thought I was going to make some short videos and it just hasn't happened this month, but I am I'm rolling with these like almost 30 minute videos, if not over. <laughs> but anyway, um, did you like any of these books? Let me know what you think about them. Let me know what some of your middle grade runner ups would be. Did you have some that didn't quite make your favorites, but they were still pretty good? I would like to know down in the comments because I always need to add to my TBR, and I hope you enjoyed this video, and if you did, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe, and I will see you all in the next video. Bye!